Right then, so just moving on. Um, so we've got, I've just done the um, the model. I haven't actually put it on the site yet, but basically we've extended, okay, let's just go back. So here we've got high side connection where we've got our IGBT and the motor here. Well, it's not the motor, but the resistor is the equivalent of the motor. And then we've got it switching the gate here with the transistor to turn it off. And then that's then uh, we obviously push pull arrangement to um, actually it's not easy it's to pull pull <laughs> but there you go and, th and that's switched by the output going low to turn this one on. Now what we've done here is this is that transistor there right but we put an extra transistor in here so that switching that high turns this one on right which turns this one on okay which turns this one on and now we've got instead of the high side we've got a low side but across the split rail okay and so now we've got the gate being switched by this this is still a switch off transistor right so if that's powered on this is off and the motor is off so when the uh, when the power here goes to a logical low yeah that turns this off which turns this off which turns this off which then allows that resistor to charge the gate and turn this on and then that turns the motor on and if the if it goes logical high or actually open well it's not open circuit is it uh, okay so when it goes logical high it then turns this on which turns this on which turns this on which then shorts the gate across discharging it turns this off turns the motor off so logical high there turns the motor off, a logical low turns the motor on, which is fine, because when we want that going low, we want this, because it's a low side one, we want this to turn on. Okay, and so what I've done is, um, we've got, uh, so this is the high side one, you can see there we've got um, um, a graph there. Now I've just done it quickly in, uh, in, uh, uh, just spiced it up, there we go. And you can see there we've got the same thing ish but for the opposite effect because what it is is that the this pwm is going uh, high and then low and then high and low you know in steps and so what we've got is the same thing but on the opposite phase you see where the power is going to the low. in fact it's uh, so when power goes oh, let's just expand it makes it easier to see and point okay so when this goes high, right, then the gate, the blue is the gate, the gate then goes low because it's shorted down and it turns off the um, IGBT and so that means that this then goes to zero because this is the output and the output will then go to zero because this is open circuit, okay. But then when that goes low, this turns on the, uh, the gate switch off transistor you see by giving it power and you can see the gate then goes high because of the resistor is that the right way around up all right i'm on the wrong bit aren't i oh, whatever anyway but basically what happens is that then that then turns this on and pulls down the output to the negative rail you see so a logical low means that you get a low you see down to the negative you see which is the opposite of this one where a logical high means the supply goes to zero you see so what we've got a logical high there makes it go to zero and here a logical low pulls it down to the negative right and what happens basically is if you have both of them turned on or turned off right in fact what happens is is that because these two circuits are actually going to be working together Right, this is what I'm aiming at. These two circuits are going to be working together. So if you actually have both of these connected, then basically this will then sit at half supply, which means that will be turned on, and so will this. So they'll both be turned on, which means all of the driver stages up to the gates will be turned on. But the gate transistor turns off the IGBT. So you've got two IGBTs there, right? And those two uh, gate uh, transistors short the gate out and turns them off so it turns both of these off which means this will end up being floating so if you have a floating input here you've got a floating output there 
This is the trinary, you see, because it's a third stage where both of these are turned off. And it stops shoot-throughs because it is inherent in the circuit that it won't do a shoot-through. And that's what I'm aiming at. So this is this side where I've basically got the low side one working independently, and it does work. You see? And so we, here we have it working. And I'm just measuring the... Uh, just dancing about a bit. Let's steady it. Maybe. Okay, I'll just put it on hold so you can see it. But we've got... Yeah, there's a little bit of a nipple there. Okay, but basically it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, overall, seven. Uh, yeah, it is, isn't it? This is two microseconds per division, so that's about 14 microseconds, which is actually a little bit slow. Okay, and that might be because we've got an extra bit of switching going on there, which is accounting for a couple of microseconds. Okay. But if we go to the uh, opposite end of the spectrum, let me, uh, oops, I mean trigger, reverse slope, and then we'll go to almost zero. There we go. Where is it at? Come on. There you go. And now you can see, oh, it disappeared again. There we go. So you can see it's just two microseconds. So this is a bit slower, right, because we've got more stages. These are a bit, about one and a half, two. I would say, yeah. So it's a bit slower, but then what we haven't got is the booster stages in the um, to the current. So what I would put in here, you see, is a current booster to make it switch quicker. And then, but obviously there's a concern because we've now got one, two, three stages right before the gate, and every transistor puts a, a delay on there, right? So the idea is to try and reduce that, and of course we're doing. Um, switch off resistors, 100, 100 ohm switch off resistors to try and make these snap off as soon as possible and snap and, and then switch on quickly. Right, so there's a reasonable amount of current. I mean, I'm talking about you know, <coughs> in, in the region of milliamps, of course, not, not amps or anything. Right, but this, this, it does work. This, this does work, and uh, we are controlling our motor, which you can see here. So, and whilst it's a bit slower on the uh, on the low side switching when you're doing it this way, and we have to obviously if we're using split rails. Uh, and if I yes, turn there we go. Okay, so now you can see. There you go. I'm going to keep it on high because this resistor network here is across. It's not not good. It's too. Um, it's a half watt arrangement for a one watt um, switch, and so if I keep because it, when it's high, uh, this is providing current only to the gate and then shut off. But when this is low, because it's powering through that transistor there, the base uh, switch off transistor, so the current is going straight through that transistor to the negative uh, from the positive. Got positive 12, negative 12. So that means it's 24 volts, and basically you get 24 volts across there. So it's poo. <coughs> but it is quick, okay. And with some refinement, we could probably make those switching, those switching times much better. But that's the basic circuit now, and we've proved out. And this is the trinary uh, that we've got. But what I want to try and do is move it to a, a proper class D interface where it's an actual amplifier output rather than being a switched output, a control switch output. And so we need an amplifier output which is a class D output. And we want that properly where the actual outputs are working in push-pull, whereas they're not at the moment. They're just uh, simply against each other. Okay. And so that's working too.